come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> Hey, thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast, where a movie talk show podcast comes your way every Saturday night, whether you are ready for it or not, in our quest for total world domination. All that we ask of you in exchange is that maybe you go on over to wherever you found us and hit that like or subscribe button, maybe that little bell up in the corner. Give us a review even wherever you found us. All that stuff helps us get found by other like-minded souls like you who are into the same crazy shit that we are. These are the internet radio superstars. Holly. Michaela. Sean. And I'm Colin. And tonight, resuming our regularly scheduled lineup, we watched the movie that Finally. was chosen by... Michaela! Michaela, we're back! We're back! <laughs> we're it, back! It, it what was are a we long back month. with? It was a long it felt month. Like a, it, I feel good. It was good to do the break, but I feel like it's good to be back picking our picks. Yeah, it was five weeks because we had best of and then listener choice. It was yeah. five weeks. Wow. So yeah. We haven't had a regular episode since last year. Yeah. Wow. wow. So this is the first the first regular episode of 2021. Um, but thank you, everybody, who wrote glad, in and suggested movies and, and voted for movies for the <laughs> Listener's Choice Month. We uh, enjoyed them all. Now, Michaela, what would you did. pick for us tonight? Red. From the year. 1986. And directed by. Hal Needham. Who we would know from. Every Burt Reynolds movie you've ever seen. <laughs> this guy directed uh, Smokey and the Bandits and, and uh, also, Cooper, Cannibal Run. And also five Spanish Bandit movies. I swear to God. I know. I saw that too. And I was like, what is this? One, one of them is just called Bandit, colon, Bandit, Bandit. <laughs> that's, <laughs> like, like, that's the name of the movie. <laughs> and it's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Hal Needham, um, I mean, I, I don't know how much you know about this guy, but he was one of the great Hollywood stuntmen. Um, I'm not sure entirely when he got his career started, I think like in the 50s, and then he became friends with Burt Reynolds at some point. The two of them uh, were roommates. Uh, Hal Needham lived in Burt Reynolds' uh, guest house for 12 years, I think. Um, and uh, That's a good gig. I'd do that. That's that's like that's uh, once upon a time in Hollywood right there. That's just two best friends hanging out. I was out. gonna say, is, isn't it? Isn't this who that's based off of? Yes. Is it? Yes. Yes. Oh, yes. The, wonderful. Uh, the Cliff Booth and uh, Rick Dalton relationship is based on Burt Reynolds and Hal Needham. Oh, that's um, great! I didn't know. That. Did you guys ever think we would six degrees that to this movie? <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot of six degrees to this oh, wait, movie that I had no idea. There are a lot of connections in this movie, but I was not expecting that one. No. Yeah. no. If you guys stick with this, you're going to hear probably a lot of interesting information about this movie. <laughs> um, but really quick, I guess, before we go there, just about Hal Needham. Um, I mean, the guy was a paratrooper in the Korean War who uh, became a Hollywood stuntman. Hollywood stuntmen are a rare breed, right, of people who like to get hurt and do crazy shit, de do death-defying things, like probably in their... Uh, normal lives um he uh like i think you know and this is a weird thing right like we're talking about stuntmen but like there really was no stuntman like or stuntman like hell needham because and this is the evidence i point you toward there was a hell needham like board game okay or an action play set called like stuntman right the hell need them like wild west town which had like a little movie crew characters and it had hell need them you could like hit a little thing and he'd jump through like a window in a western and a little bar and was this if you couldn't afford the evil knievel thing ah, got you yeah. the hell need them one <laughs> i think so <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, Sean's got a picture oh, of it. Wow. Yes, indeed. Wow. There this we go. Awesome. <laughs> I know, but apparently man is just so generic. Like that's the great value version, you know, <laughs> dude, it's like a little Western scene. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah, that's that's what we can beat people up. That looks like the bar in once upon a time in Hollywood. 
Yeah, it's like a two-level I mean, Western set. So that thing, apparently, they didn't make a whole lot of them, right? Because, you know, oh it's God. a stuntman thing. But this is how big, like, stuntmen were in the, regarded in the 70s. And he was like this breakout guy. That thing, how much is that? Or, or, I don't know. Are you looking on eBay? I'm about to. Because I'm those, about to I have shit. heard that those are very, very, <laughs> very expensive to find. eBay's yeah. like, nah, not going to happen. Yeah. We, we got we to gotta, uh, do kaboom um uh racer here for you from toy story 4 but that's about it <laughs> <laughs> well he gave up uh stunt manning uh and, and became a director and of course put burt reynolds in a lot of his movies including Smokey yeah. and the bandit but of course like the saturday night freak show audience may remember him as the director of the science fiction classic michaela you got this one was it like Megaforce or something? Megaforce <laughs> starring Barry Bostwick, <laughs> which I still you have know, yet to see. <laughs> you know, I've, I've doing... never seen that, but I saw it on the IMDb and I said, either this has been done or it will be done <laughs> at some point on the freak show. <laughs> and maybe you uh, will be the I've person. Been doing this sh- <laughs> I've been doing this show for me and Colin around eight years. This is maybe the first time or one of the very rare times I've seen Colin celebrate a movie. By throwing his hands in the air <laughs> and yelling its name. We have to bring this to the podcast just to make Colin happy, I think. Yeah, mega force. I mean, that's always been, it's one of those ones that's circling out in I the think ar- it's very outer po- darkness. It's very possible we just narrowed down Colin's pick for next week. Right. Sean, just look at the cover art. You'll get what I'm saying. Like, <laughs> like one glance at it, you're like, oh, yeah, that's a freak show movie. Yeah. Megaforce. Ooh. And Barry Bostrick in like a serious role back when he was considered because oh, now no. he can't oh. do anything but comedy. But yeah, back then. Um, Is he wearing so, a headband? Yes, because it's the face 80s. armor. Oh yes. no! <laughs> On a motorcycle. Yes, <laughs> lovely. <laughs> um, okay, yeah. Deeds, not words. What the fuck is this movie? Uh, you're gonna have to find out. So oh, one, that's amazing. Okay. One, one final thing about Hal Needham. Apparently, like after so Rad was the last movie that he directed. Um, Michaela, I'm hoping I'm not stealing your thunder here. Do you just do some research? Yeah, go on? for it. I appreciate your passion for Hal Needham. <laughs> <laughs> well, he went and, uh, tried to break the land speed record, right? So there was a project called the land speed record pro- or land speed project where you, these guys were trying to go like as fast as they humanly could, like how fast can a, you know, driven land propelled vehicle take you and this ran for many years and eventually became rocket propelled and apparently hell Needham believes that he i don't think he was actually driving but his driver broke the sound barrier on land in 1979 apparently this has been widely disputed and he was never actually granted a guinness world record Aww. for this unfortunately and hell Needham Maybe. passed away in uh, at 82 years old i think of lung cancer in uh i think it was like 2013 so may he rest maybe he was trying to buckaroo bonsai himself into the eighth dimension (laughs) (laughs) he's the real life buckaroo bonsai but probably actually does know martial arts probably probably all right so red um (laughs) (laughs) no martial arts back to red yeah I mean, I guess that I can see kind of the appeal why a stunt man turned director would want to do this subject, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. I can do it better than anyone else, so why shouldn't I be buying the camera? But I feel like watching this movie, it does not look like it has great stunts. Like, this is not what I would put on my highlight reel of, like, look at my stunt work, you know? Like, you'd think a stunt guy would direct better action scenes. Yeah, it's well, I mean, there's a lot of stunt work in this, but it's a very specific kind of stunt work. That's the thing. Yes. Like this isn't, you know, driving a car, like jumping out of buildings. This is just strictly BMX stunts, with it, which to me is kind of strange for a, for a previous stunt man to do. You know what I mean? Like, I would think, yeah, like you said, he would be doing something more in his wheelhouse. I'm assuming he wasn't a BMX rider. That's just me uh, assuming. Holly, I think it's hubris. I think he's like, I broke the land speed fucking sound barrier. Of course I can direct bike stunts, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, he was hired and onto this. Beautifully as well. Um, but that's the thing. Uh, the movie, um, it has uh, like an opening title sequence and an end credit sequence where it looks like they brought in actual, like, 
you know, professional BMX racers and they are doing these things that I guess would be considered stunt work. It's like, uh, how do you describe it? It's like something that, that you'd maybe see it like a circus or something, right? With like, doing tricks. yeah, there you go. Bike it's trick. This bouncing is bouncing and bouncing up and down on a wheel. That's all it is. This it's is bouncing on one wheel. In this, movie. this is the same problem we had with breaking and breaking two. We don't know what good dancing is, so we don't know how they're doing. I don't know what good BMX dancing is, so I don't know how to grade this. Like, is it's? I'm assuming it's good because it looks great. Yeah, because I don't know if I'd be able to, you know, maintain balance on a, you know, because they're basically doing this weird shit Call where they're turning the the bikes, they're making bikes into shapes that they were never naturally meant. You know, you're supposed to just sit on the seat and pedal. I was gonna they're, say, Colin, you went a whole summer with a whole bike riding thing. What? I'm going to say you can't do anything in this movie. Yeah, I'm, like, I'm I, saying I can't either. Like, I'm sorry. Colin riding his bike down by Sinisippi is not the same as <laughs> jumping up and down on your, on your wheel. No. <laughs> unless you were, unless you were wheeling the Rockford symbol. I don't think it's the same, but <laughs> once upon a time, Colin was not always the age that he is now and did Ooh. actually have a BMX bike. Well, I don't know. Is BMX like, is that just this? Okay. Cause I used to call them dirt bikes. Me and my friends would call them dirt bikes, right? Yeah. You had like your 10 speed, then you had your dirt bike, but now dirt no, bike is dirt like bike a motorized. Is motorized. I yeah. always, yeah. I assume dirt bike is like a motorized bike. Yeah. Okay. Colin, I'm, I'm with you. We, we did call them because dirt bikes, cause they were different than a regular, like ride down the street bike. The tires were different. It was more for going over heavy shit. So some places, I think it's soda and pop. I think it's the same thing. Some places did call them dirt bikes. But are they are they all of that style? Is that BMX? And we apologize, BMX racers out there who are listening to this episode because you're a big fan of Red. Ooh, I want to know what the Venn diagram is right now. Horror, horror movies, horror movie podcast, BMXers. Who's listening right now? Let us know. Here's, here's the thing, though. When I go to the skate park and I see BMX kids there, they're doing actual tricks. Like, they're doing flips and, like, all kinds of cool shit. They're not just, like, folding their bike into a weird shape and bouncing up and down one wheel in the middle of the skate park, you know? Like, they're actually doing something. So this has to be, like, some sort of weird segment of BMX that is these specific yeah. moves. Yeah, this and, is the well, subgenre of BMX. And, like, you know, uh, Sean was saying how with, with break-in, we, we're not familiar with, like, the like the beginning of day of break dancing like in the 80s what was good and what was, i mean we know now we can see someone dancing we're like oh they're a really fucking good dancer but back in the 80s we like we don't know what was good at that time i feel like this is the same situation where it's like we've seen bike tricks done and we've seen it done really well but at this point when it was like a new thing was this like top-notch stunt work with bmx bikes you know i feel I, like I it was say yeah, I feel I mean, like this is doing, cutting edge dancing BMX stunt work. Right, right. The guy it's, doing it's, the it's stunts. It's improved, but at this point, this is like cutting edge stuff. Yeah, the guy doing the stunts for crew is like, it was at the time, was like the championship bike BMX guy in the world sure. or whatever. So, yeah. And these would be eclipsed maybe then by like extreme sports, you know, right? Where don't they do like, is there like an extreme sport bike thing where they're going off a giant? Yeah, this, is the, this is the X Games and all that stuff and dirt competitions and oh yeah, tons of it. It still goes on to this day. Okay. All right. Um, but the movie itself, I guess, and has, it has this huge following, right? I mean, because uh, from what I remember, it didn't open very well it did play in theaters it didn't open very well and kind of amassed this following which i i mean now has led to like vinegar syndrome the the video company put out a 4k release of rat and they're like what the what am i missing something here is this like a I huge mean, deal so i saw this for the first time in 2018 because i was going to a how did this get made live show where they covered this and back then it was not available anywhere um, and how did this get made? Literally sent out Vimeo links with like a VHS copy of it. And that's how we watched it. So like, wow. I would have liked to have had that back then the first time I watched it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This is uh, apparently the first time in 40 years or 30 years it's been released on any, uh, a Blu-ray DVD, something like that. Like this was away for a long time. Mm, I, I was, I was going to ask of the four of us who watched this for the first time tonight. Sean and Colin. 
Yeah, first I was gonna time. say, don't don't just raise your hands. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so Michaela's Johnny seen it before. It before uh, uh, I mean, we've we've watched that BMX dancing scene oh, many yeah. a time. Oh yeah, just mm-hmm. by itself. But tonight's the first time seeing the whole thing. Yeah, yeah. For actually, sure. Michaela, maybe you can add a little or shed a little light on oh, how did Rad come to the podcast? Because I know you had like a a discovery here. Well, yeah, like I said, I, I went to the How Did This Get Made live show where we, you know, we watched it beforehand and they talked about it. And it kind of like put it away for a little while because I didn't want to bring it right after another a major podcast had done it, you know. So I, I shelved it for a little bit and I was like hemming and hawing on what I was going to pick. And I was like, well, you guys were kind of disappointed by the 80s cheese in, in a killer work. I was like, so I'll bust out this 80s cheese that I've got and we'll see how it goes over. <laughs> Good call. Mm, delicious. <laughs> All right. So what's this movie about? Maybe you can set us up. Like what is the, uh, what's the, what's, what's going on? Who's our people and what are they doing in the movie? Rad. Wait, rad, rad. Are we bringing this back too? Right. We brought back bitching. Everybody I talked to is saying bitching now because we Rad's brought back, it back. Dude. I've never, I don't think like I ever stopped saying rad. Yeah. yeah I still it's say been rad. back for yeah. at least a couple of years. Okay. And for you newbies out there. That's short for radical. Thank you very much. That's very rad. Wow. Yeah. Well, Colin, I think it's no. just rad. I think it's just rad Colin. now, Colin. Yeah, that's right. Now it's just rad. Colin. I know they don't Colin even know that it was lessons. used to be radical. That's really no, radical, just, man. <laughs> now it's rad. That's why it's just rad now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so thanks, Uncle Colin. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> radical <lessons> kids. Colin. <laughs> <laughs> so what's uh... you're like? You're like it always reminds me of that um, Buscemi uh, scene. I, no, it, no, it reminds me of Turtles, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles one, where the where they're little. Oh yeah, it yeah, shows yeah. them growing up, and then he's like radical, radical, radical. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I thought you were gonna say the how do you do, fellow kids? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like that's Colin right now. <laughs> stay radical, kids. Oh, <laughs> uh, can we have a stay radical shirt? There you go. Be one of them too. Why not? <laughs> so who's uh, so this movie's about a guy named Crew Crew, Crew Jones. Crew yeah. Jones. That's C R U for all yep. you cool kids out there. Wanna name your kids crew. Who is he and what does he do? He's a thirty five year old uh, high school senior <laughs> <laughs> who uh has to choose between going in a bike race or taking the SATs. Big, big That's dilemma. the major conflict of the movie. And this I is such and a- my favorite part about that is that he even says at one point, he's like, I can take the SATs anytime. Like which he I think totally, is not true. He just don't totally puts to... a hole in like the only conflict. <laughs> right. But don't you have to take like at them at scheduled times, like with the test proctor and stuff. It's not like you can just do walk-ins on the SATs. You know? True. But you can always like schedule to do it at another time. Right. That's true. Right. But like, it's not it, like uh, there's, it's not like it's on one Thursday in your senior year. And that's the only time in your whole life you can do it. Like you can do it at another time. But it is the, um, I think, the most wholesome conflict they could come up with for this movie. <laughs> I think. I don't. I don't think they want to get into the weeds or get a little dark or dirty or anything. So they're like SATs. Yeah, it is one of those uh, '80s, like wholesome '80s family movies that where everybody says shit like every other f- word, and. Uh, <laughs> Because yeah. that's in the eighties, right? That's what just oh, like yeah. you, that's... your family film was full of shit. Uh, all Put upon time. single mom with a precocious younger daughter. That was like an eighties trope for yep. a long time. Oh, yeah. right? This yeah, this is this close to being a pilot. Yeah. And full of wall to wall bitching eighties tunes. Uh cranked out that's mostly right. by John Farnham, I think, right? Was uh yes. he did like three of them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, but break the really, ice. Really great. Like this, this been out on vinyl has to be right. It Come is. on, this is yeah. This is a it, classic soundtrack. It actually got a vinyl release. Its first release, like they put out a vinyl in the eighties of this soundtrack. So the the soundtrack has always existed for home purchase, just not the movie. Yeah, okay. yeah. The um, I mean, I got to tell you, this is one of those soundtracks. If you're into like eighties movie soundtracks, I think since the last time, like I remember really liking the Wraith right soundtrack like that was the last one maybe that we watched the movie and i'm like i gotta go get that soundtrack uh rad might be up there i don't know what were the song titles there was um break the angel angel and then what was it thunder and lightning 
Was it Thunder and Lightning? Okay. Thunder and Ice? Th- or no, Breaking the Ice, right. Sorry. Yeah, Thunder Break the and- Ice was the first one, but the one at the end. Yeah, I can't remember the title of it. It was I know, something I watched awesome. the credits and I still remember. <laughs> um, so the, uh, yeah, I mean, this is, uh, so basically what we've got here is a, a classic American underdog story that takes place in the world of BMX racing that nobody knew of anything about before. And then this is the movie that was going to expose this uh, world of what the kids were into. I am shocked, shocked that this is not a canon film. Yeah. It feels like yeah. it, doesn't it? I it am does. too. It feels exactly like it. But how did like, canon the, the, miss this subgenre? The, the breaking kids could have walked through the background in this. Yeah. But did okay, but <laughs> feels where's like my Van Dam and the Leotard? <laughs> what yeah. were the other there? So there was thrashing, right? And BMX bandits. Right. Yeah. Um, forgive me if I'm missing anything, but like, were any of those, do you know, Canon films, did they get in on the BMX craze or they were too busy chasing down the underground arm wrestling thing that happens on, you know, nation's truck stops. Yeah. That, that's where they put their money instead. <laughs> okay. I, I don't know if either of those movies are Canon films or not. Isn't Nicole Kidman in BMX bandits though? Yes. <laughs> yes, she is. <laughs> All right. Who knew? Uh, again, this is why I was like, should we watch this as well? Like, we could double feature this. <laughs> so, Crew is a, uh, I don't, I'm not entirely sure of the actor who played him. Bill Allen. He plays um, no name parts in television now, like store clerk and, you know, science. He was, it's like one of his latest credits is scientist on an episode of Breaking Bad. Oh, there you go. All right. Well, I'm <laughs> oh. glad to hear that he's still out there Interesting. working. You know, now he's getting those sweet, sweet red residuals. Finally. Um, Yeah, finally, after all this time. Um, So he is a uh, paper boy, right? In a small town. Awesome. He's a rad paper boy. Is he, though? I mean, I guess when you consider how far out of his way he goes to bring the paper, but he doesn't start till like 10 a.m. Yeah, everybody's awake in this town when the paper boy goes out. Like uh, us uh, former paper boys, remember that this is not at all what actually happens when you go out. But in no, the no, movie, no, you, <laughs> it's, it's in the summertime. You are starting before dawn, and we all know that you know the sun rises earlier. So you can imagine you're out there at like five in the morning at the at the least. Like, I'm sorry, he's a terrible paper boy. He what? is a terrible, terrible paper boy. But he, he does all those tricks. Lawns. You can't ride through people's lawns. He rides, he he rides on top of their cars. Out of the guy's hand. Yeah. Knocks coffee out of his hand. He's riding on people's cars. He's like plowing through people's fences. He's a terrible paper boy. The, the garbage Kids. truck ride he takes. Rides the dumpster while it's coming yeah, up. He does. <laughs> Kids, man. Kids in the 80s. They were, uh, they were a problem. He's got things timed out so like he can get into the neighbor's yard and the dog will like jump up and grab the paper from him. This is a thing that he and the dog Toto do, right? Um, Mm -hmm. (laughs) He was like, you know, he he delivers to the guys in the fishing boat every morning. Like this is an amazing sequence of him riding through the town and establishing him and his two friends, also paper boys or one paper. So when he. So when he uh, gets depressed later on, they should have done a, a reworking of this scene where he's just driving by all depressed and he's throwing the papers and he throws it to the guys in the boats and it just goes in the water. Cause they're not there. And like, there should have been a down version of this scene just to yes. show how he's down and out and doesn't care yes. anymore. It's not doing I'm, his tricks. He's actually delivering the paper. Come on. <laughs> yeah, this, the only point of the scene though, was to show, Hey, this kid can ride a bike. Yeah. yeah. That was it. No, I'm, I'm with Sean on this. I want, I want it. I wanted to come back to that. That's G ge- that's genius. <laughs> Yeah, his um, yeah, and there'd be the scene where he actually does throw it on the porch for the guy who's like on the porch. Right, we, I said on the porch right, this we, time he does, and we like, kind of get it because he threw it on the porch. Yeah, he's on we kind yeah we kind of get it, but it's an inspiring moment. It should have been the down moment, I think. But mm-hmm. it's just me. Mm-hmm. Well, Crew's life is about to change because mm. it turns out that a big multinational corporation that sponsors, or it is like a BMX, like uh racing, like, you know, national racing mm-hmm. uh, organization has chosen this small town to bring their hell track. 
the hell track, which always it's always this, awesome. <laughs> it's a great it's a great name. This movie's so wholesome though. It should have probably been Heck Track. I know, which I would have laughed. <laughs> I would have laughed at. That would have been great. That would have been better. But this Wait, is going to call it Heck Track. The hell it's track. Hell. Shh, we don't say that here. Did you know? <laughs> That there are in certain BMX circles right now, people who recreate the hell track from uh, from Red and uh, do races on it. Oh yeah, I would hope so. Yeah, this movie That's has cool. a following. That's what I'm, we're probably talking to some of those folks. So we are aware of your enthusiasm for building the track from from Red. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this uh, it's a hell of a track. It's like a little. Uh a little so like a bowl they go in and come out of like it's it's interesting. it looks like a bathtub yeah with a plank sticking like an, out of it it looks like an oversized bathtub with like a seesaw coming out of it yeah yeah it's got the s's i don't know that the first time i ever heard it, i got the s's <laughs> um so the company is coming the company is headed up by um a guy who you guys all recognized from Dirty Dancing or Short Dirty Circuit Dancing. 2. Uh, Short he was Circuit also two. in Wait Until Dark, right? And he was in Gator, of course, which is a Hal Needham, you know, uh, or Burt Reynolds movie. With um, So he's basically the, uh, so this is this is the other conflict, right? Is this a central conflict or was it SAT's central conflict? I mean, I think he's, well, he's like the primary um villain right so i would think that he's the the big conflict why is he the villain then what's what's the problem with this company coming to town they're going to bring in all their um factory racers which i was like okay this is a, what's a factory racer i'm assuming it's their in-house racers all their guys that they have yeah, in their, their stable of racers yeah oh so this is actually the bike company putting on sorry that's what it is it's a bike company is putting on the race which yeah. is going to be televised all over the world. And they're bringing in their, uh, you know, their factory racers to compete and people, they have a little town meeting, right? Where like, everybody's trying to meet and, and figure out like, what, if this is going to be good for the town or not. And I don't what, so what is their angle here? Cause they're like, we're going to make a ton of money. And somehow you get the feeling that maybe they're exploiting the town. Were they, did I miss this? I I mean, they don't really go into a lot of detail on what their plan is. I kind of get the idea that this is just supposed to be like a slobs versus snobs sort of thing where like this big city bike company is going to come in and run their tournament and but they're going to like rig it. So they're, you know, the their elitist factory team can only win. Yeah, yeah. I, I think there's a there's a meeting. There's a town. Like you said, there's a town meeting earlier on where the, the sponsors from the BMX group are there kind of presenting what they're going to be doing to the crowd. And then a very understanding woman for this time, an older woman stands up and says, but the regular kids around town like BMXing too. We should make them a part of it. Like they're, the, the town is like championing this. They're just like, yes, these meddling kids should be able to ride their BMX bikes around. Oh, town. crew is like a town hero to these people. Everybody yeah, apparently it. that was that was part of the reason for like the establishing uh, paper route is because it showed how he's connected to all of the people in the town. The old lady that Very stood true. up, she's the one at the shoe store that would like wait for him to see if he made it in time for his like record or whatever. Mm -hmm. Very true. Yeah. We also get a scene where we find out uh, it was like an extended uh, stunt race kind of thing where uh, uh, there's a friendly rivalry between uh, crew and the neighborhood motorcycle cop, right? <laughs> Who every morning yeah. the cop shows up outside the house, which I'm like, is that a clubhouse? Where the fuck do these three kids live? Because yeah. it looks like a fucking shanty in the middle of nowhere. It's like I a think shanty it's, in a lumberyard. Right. I yeah. think it's the foreman's house in the lumberyard. Yeah, like that's just it's just one of those shitty construction site buildings that they put up, and it's like this will be here for five months, and then we'll be gone. Yeah, it's like like when they put up a trailer, and that's like yeah. you know the the main office for the the site. I feel like that's what it is, right? But we're yeah. saying the kids didn't yeah. live there. It's like crew and his friend and his friend's girlfriend, right? And they're all BMX. I know they were eating breakfast there, but no, I don't think they live there. I think it's just like no. the kids' clubhouse. Yeah, yeah, because I mean they show Crew's house at one point. He goes home to see his mom and stuff, so we know he doesn't live there. He also right. goes home to stuff his sister in the garbage. That's right. <laughs> and we all used to stuff our sisters in the garbage. Right. Can. The things uh, the things I did to my sister were far worse than putting her in a garbage can. <laughs> oh, for so sure. I, I liked that, that he even put the lid on top, though. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Shut up in there until, yeah, and mom's Those right there. 
mom has played punky brister kids. Yeah. Well, you gotta, yeah, you gotta put them in the, in the trash can. Oh yeah. No, no, don't get me wrong. That girl belonged in the trash. I was okay with it. <laughs> oh, I for was sure. Really, you know, she's on par with the little brother from, uh, um, uh, teen witch. Yeah. 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 Definitely. Well, she looks like that little sister from uh small miracle. I think is the TV show about the little girl robot. Oh, I, familiar. I was trying to small figure. wonder. Yeah. yeah. Small trying wonder. to place her. But uh, mom is played by Tally Shire, right? Of the Godfather and Rocky fame. Would you be surprised to know? I mean, obviously the logo that comes up at the beginning is Talia film. Uh, she was married to um, Jack Schwartzman, right? Who produced the movie. Yeah. And Jack and Talia are the mother and father of Jason Schwartzman. The, uh, I was just going to say, is that Jason Schwartzman's I, parents? Yeah. Uh, Hollywood so is seriously just nepotism, man. Can't make yeah. it related yeah. to somebody. It's a family <laughs> business. Uh, yeah. <laughs> once you get in there, so yeah, she her company produced it, um, so that's why she's in there. She's the mom who's like, you got to take your SATs. But is there any question really? We've seen these movies before. Is there any question that at the end of the movie she's going to be cheering him on during the final big battle between him and the factory biker kid? This, I mean, if she's these a- movies, there's never any question. Well, I mean, if she's a, if she's a good parent, she better damn well be there cheering him on. Come on, she's going to cheer him on. He's going to get the girl, and he's going to win the race. And the whole and town is going to come together. To and, this is what I love about eighties movies. The whole town like comes girl? together to. Who's oh yeah, girl, yeah, yeah. Sean? Oh, the girl is uh, the infamous Lori Laughlin. Um, despite Becky. her despite her criminal record, I still have a crush on her, uh, even Please. though she is a horrible person now. But. It, yeah, Lori Laughlin and Becky herself. I think we're two. I think we're one movie away from putting her on the wall, right? Because she was in Amityville 3D, which oh. we covered on this show, and then this. Uh, yeah, um, I'm not maybe sure a while. Make it, Colin. Yeah. So who who so who is she in this movie? She's Christian who rides with. Uh, I can't remember mongoose. The team. Mongoose, yeah. Um, that's the team name. Mark Taylor is like the number one guy. This guy is also like 45 years old. Holy shit. This guy, uh, he's the number one biker in the world. Yeah. And, and then they have Holly's favorite characters, Rex and Rod, the twins that are like his henchmen. Yeah. Rex and Rod. Yeah. Cause they have like a whole team. They come in on this parade. Right. And of course, as soon as we see these people, they are uh, disparaging the local community. It's basically, yeah, like you said, it's the have the have nots. These kids are from, like, they've traveled the world and all that. And so they're in this hick town and they're just kind of making fun of everything around them. And we instantly despise them, right? As these elitist fucks who've come to this small, wholesome town and are just like, eh, these people are, we're like basically in rags to whatever. It's a rag store, you know, and all this other yeah. stuff. Looking down there, snooty nose. Disdain, and like, Colin. Yeah. Disdain. But you also get the sense that, you know, Lori Laughlin is like too good for them, but she's like trapped in a corporate contract or something. You get the sense that she's not like the rest of them. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think they made sure you felt that way because they put her in a different car. Yeah. And <laughs> the lead guy, uh, what was his name? The lead top uh, Bart. BMXer? Bart. Has Bart the Taylor. house real, for her. Whose real name is Bart. Yeah. Is it? Uh-huh. Yeah, because okay, he was like, that makes more sense. I can't imagine having like a like a hot young character and naming him Bart. So didn't he do like some Olympic shit or something in real life. I mean, that led to him being in this movie. There was some kind of right? It was I mean, okay, everyone except for like Lori Laughlin, Bill Allen, and Talia Shire is basically real athletes in this movie. And it shows through their acting prowess. Sure They're acting in their mustaches, because those are real. Those are real BMX mustaches. Yeah. Well, there's also the a real Canadian actor. Mustaches. <laughs> there's a real actor. Ray Ray Walston is in this movie. He basically plays the town, right? Uh, he's the 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 voice of the town versus the uh, oh. the guy who's the head of the BMX race. Um, so there's like a conflict that's about to happen here. But um, um, so um, crew develops the hots for the Lord the Christian, you know, Lori Laughlin character. And they have a meet cute. Uh, I mean, I know they have one at the, the, the uh, parade, right. Where he's helping another townsville or townsperson, uh, you know, out, but they're real meat. No, hold on. We got to talk about this townsperson. Yeah, real yeah, quick. We, we need to stop and talk about this woman for a minute. <laughs> Holly, do you want to, do you want to go in on this lady? So this woman comes out of the crowd and she's like, 
I need to get through. We need to stop this parade. I need to get through. Why does she need to get through? Because she left a cake in the oven. She left her house with a cake in the oven. I don't know if you've, you've ever never... baked a cake, but they don't take very long. No. They do not take very long at all. So where did she go that she had thought she had enough time? You and your neighbor? space age 2021 ovens that cook cakes in no time at all. This is 1986. <laughs> Okay. I the 80s ovens didn't work that way. So, so your, so your oven did not reach 350 <laughs> degrees in 1986. No, is that what you're no. telling me? 86, right. it was 250 <laughs> tops. Okay. Wouldn't go any right. further. Double time for everything. Turkeys took weeks. I didn't realize that's sure the level the of this conversation. So, we're just going to move on. <laughs> but she, when they first introduced her, she's like, she's got to get through, but she's also like, this isn't America. And she's handing out little American flags to the people. And she's like, what yeah. do we do? Yeah, so that was my fine, other question man. is that was my other question is was her errand where she left the cake was it she so she could go to the parade and hand out flags was that the errand so. she needed to run? As far no, as we know, yes. Otherwise. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, this lady is operating on a level of that I don't understand. Like, I her priorities are. I, I kind of want to spend time with this woman and and find out <laughs> why she why she thinks the way she does, why how she ticks. Because she's fascinating to me. Well, and I feel I like if we know a, anything, oh. I feel like if we know anything about this town, she's baking a cake for like this event, right? Maybe. Like, right, it has to be right. So that's oh, that's what it is. Oh my god, she's probably baking the cake for the party, right? The welcome party, the yeah. dancing party, yeah. Oh, that's what she's baking the cake for. <laughs> she's bringing the cake to like the weird fucking prom that they're having. <laughs> I, I feel like this lady is. Now. This lady is a very Kitty Foreman character. I feel like she's drinking at home. <laughs> I feel like I feel like that's giving her too much credit. Yeah, uh, I don't know. I think she's taking she's stuff. taking nips. I mean, she's she's crazy. That's for damn sure. And she likes these kids a little too much. Yeah, the way fine she's young like, crew. The way yeah, she the way man. she gushes about crew, it's a little creepy. Yeah. Well, Even though we know he's thirty five years old, he's supposed to be seventeen. <laughs> Well, tell me so. about this crazy prom you're talking. What, what do you mean of a prom? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a BMX prom? What, what are we talking about? Wait, a BMX prom? It's Wait, set this like up in my theater of the it's mind. It's like homecoming week. It's okay. like homecoming week for these people, right? There's a parade, there's a fair, and there's a fucking dance. The whole town is coming together for this BMX event. There are, It's like spirit week, right? Yeah, yeah, but everyone of, everyone of all ages is at this dance, and like yeah. all the elderly men are joking about spiking the punch that also all these children and teenagers are coming to. Yeah. We have no which context is, for this dance. What is which it? Which is kind of which is kind of why I said that it, it this town reminded me of uh, Valentine Bluff because the town all comes together for like the same social event. Yeah, I'm That's like this is my like yeah. Valentine. It's the same weird ass small town. Uh, they came together to watch the BMXers dance sexily, obviously. On their uh, bikes. Well, yeah. It, well, hold guys, on. First, well, first did you guys know that bike dancing was a thing? Because it's a thing. It's yeah. clearly their the foreplay, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah, obviously. Um, but, I mean, come on. Like, the... Oh, God, I love the 80s. Did you... The, the <laughs> uniforms... <laughs> It, you you don't get this anymore because like the uniforms they're wearing and they all like this is just the BMXers the famous ones that have come to town they're all there's a well choreographed dance they're all like have second careers as you know dancers and teen beat models like it's crazy and they all do a, a choreographed sexy dance as a twin sexy dance just for Holly <laughs> in yeah. cool space uniforms whatever that those, was that they're wearing Sean, those uniforms are from the TV show V they were left over from ah! <laughs> that's what they look like. Yeah. That's and beautiful. they had their names embroidered on the front. Did you see that? No. Rex and Rod. Yeah. Wait, there's there's oh a little more God. a little more info on Rex and Rod, right? Like uh, their future career okay. in Hollywood. Oh God. This, this, oh. Part, this, I could not this believe blew, this. This blew my mind. It blew my mind too. So Chad and Carrie Hayes are a like blockbuster Hollywood writing duo. They just l listen to some of these things they've written over the years. Uh, the turning that movie that just came out last year with Finn Wolfhard, Oof. um, the conjuring, the reaping house of wax. And Sean, you'll like this. They wrote on Baywatch nights. 
Yeah. And they I've do they did several, several of the, the vampires come in. Yeah, I bet. Did they do several of the Annabelle movies too or just the uh, they created the character? They just got story by credits, but they're getting residuals left and fucking right 24/7. They're probably secretly loaded. Yeah. That's right. You saw them here first on Rad before they That's took Hollywood funny. horror by storm. There you go. We tied it back it's to a horror. It's by horror yeah. in, this, in this scenario. Um, <laughs> this was the biggest turnoff of my entire life was this twin these guys, dance. <laughs> these guys seem like they sh- they're they good bad guys. I could have swore I've seen them in other things, but they've only done like yeah, three movies. Because they look like, like the as psycho far as being, in 10 to Midnight. <laughs> They kind of do, yeah. That's very a little true. bit. Maybe that's it. Maybe that's why I'm so traumatized by two of them. <laughs> right? At least they're not naked. That's true. It could have been worse. Well, they also come with uh, they come with two uh, girls who look like Madonna. Well, actually, one of them I thought looked like Debbie Harry. Uh, I did they too. Have this, like yeah. the Madonna hair and all that, but they're not. I honestly thought it was Debbie Harry at first. Yeah, she, I mean, she has the look, but I mean, they're yeah. not. They're not BMXers, right? The girls aren't BMXers. No, they're groupies. No, I think they're, they're just groupies. Like, yeah, groupies. This is, okay. uh, I think, Colin's dream come true to just leave a building, walk down the street, and have two women just come up and put their arms around them, especially women who look like that. Yeah, Colin, what? your favorite scene, right? Wait, is that like ha- is that like people don't have that dream? So, well, the, I mean, you know, s- with uh, their it, tigers, yeah. or no, no, was it tiger stripes or a leopard? Or, uh, sorry, zebra stripe. 80s, I, think, I think all like, animals. It was were a present. blue tiger. Well, you're talking about the suit she wore dancing, that yeah. like blue tiger print jumpsuit that yeah. Yeah. did not bring her. Yeah. <laughs> All right, calm down, Colin. Okay, so at this dance, because Lori Laughlin is a. I thought she was a participant. I thought she was one of the bikers, right? Yeah. Why doesn't she get to participate? Does right. she say? She, I think she does because at the end she's wearing like her jumpsuit uniform, like. And I think, I think she's there point, to. I think at one point they mentioned like a like a women's race, so I think that she's in like a different division. I think there's a women's division. We just never see this she, actually happen because I think they mentioned that Cruz friend was in that too, wasn't she? Like the women's race. Oh, I think you're right. Yeah. They, okay. Before the start of Hell Track, they give her an award for being the number one female BMXer in yes. the country. Yes. Yes. Okay. So she is that. She's wearing the uniform to like to root on her team at the end. That's why she ends up in it. Cause there's no other reason. Um, but I, yeah, that's I, it. She's I the number one. There was another women's race though. I really do. I mean, probably. Yeah. They just didn't show it. Well, I think this was the best scene in the movie. This, uh, crazy prom thing where basically, uh, she, in order to attract the attention of crew, who is clearly the alpha dog, uh, BMXer of this town. Right. And she doesn't like what's his name. Bruno Blutus. Uh, Brock Bart. Bart. She doesn't like him. Bart so she jumps over Crew's bike outside the place in order to get into the gymnasium. And then she's like, yeah, come on. And, and crew comes in going like, what are we going to do? And then send me an, a- or uh, yeah, send me an angel by real life starts playing. And they do like, uh, it's like, a, it's a fucking dance scene that takes place on BMX bikes, doing all sorts of tricks in slow motion with the glitter a ball. And lighting, it's it, something. I'm sorry, else. Colin, but she does not jump over him. She does not. Her no. um, stunt double it, that's twice the size uh, of her on on a pulley gets yeah. over. I was her. gonna say a that mullet really says that's not her. <laughs> a yeah. man in a really bad wig does a BMX ballet with crew. Yeah, and you're right. It is. Um, it is a. It's like a 10 minute dance scene. Nine and a half minutes of it are in slow motion. It yeah. is amazing. It was but weird. It wonderful. To make it look cool, right? Because if it yeah. was at regular speed, it would look terrible. Well, they they had to do that so that Aunt Becky could actually be shown in parts of it. Yeah, right. For the like three seconds that she was able to actually maintain balance doing some of these crazy things, because obviously it's going to yeah. stunt people and everything else. But right. Um. So they meet cute. And so that means, of course, like if you meet cute, you like the girl in this town, that means you take her ass sliding, which is a hitherto unknown sport that is only done in this town. Maybe you can explain this dating. (laughs) What is this dating ritual that is referred to? Because early on, he says, like, (laughs) maybe why don't we go ass sliding? He's like, I'm only going ass sliding with like someone special. And so we find out. I mean, that's what we all say. But heat of the moment and stuff like that. Sometimes <laughs> you just you're, ass slide with random people. But when you're when you're lonely and you know it's just you got the I urge. Mean, 
It we've all that... ass slided. We've all ass slid with the wrong person. Let's We're all that. consenting adults. <laughs> it's happened. All right. Yep. Well, what is it in this movie? What are we talking about here? As the audience goes, what the fuck? Ass sliding. Yes, made popular by the movie Rad. A, You've maybe done it it's yourself. It's a cement luge. So, <laughs> it looks so like you, a sewer drainage lo- Like It is. Concrete. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so all it of you is. all of you folks that are online dating, your, uh, your new tagline can now be, what I would give to go ass heading with you. <laughs> right? That's an interesting because people will be like, what is that? I got to match with this guy just to find out what yes. that is. And but if, if someone does match with you, sure. Right. Yeah, and if, someone someone, does if you know. find someone who knows it, oh my God, keep them forever. <laughs> then you found your partner to go ass sliding with. <laughs> yep. It's what basically, yeah, it's, sliding? they use this, uh, it's like a, it's a drainage, uh, like a concrete drainage slide and your partner lays on you and you just go down the, it's like going down a, it's like a water slide, right? A really scary <laughs> Indian water slide. <laughs> yeah. Fully clothed into that, the river. Do you want to put your, do you want to put your wet ass on my crotch and we can slide into a dirty river? Yep. Let's do that. In sliding. sweatsuits, we're gonna wear sweatsuits. You know the thing that can absorb as much water as as possible. <laughs> like it's really, like, like full, it's like a full body diaper. <laughs> it's beautiful, touching moment where these two connect. But this is no, they cannot stand against the force of this corporation as it tries to bear down upon them. Because basically, there's a qualifying race that takes place mm-hmm. where crew actually does come out in first place and this scares the holy hell out of the corporation because now they're like well we don't actually want this guy to participate in our race because we don't want to unseat our champion the whole thing's rigged so bart will win and so they're like we have to figure out a way to cut him out of this right so what are the nefarious methods that take up basically the rest of the running time that the corporation uses to try and keep crew from competing? You have to be sponsored. And what is the first yeah. one? $500? I think so. I don't know what the, is it? Okay. They make, well, yeah. they make like an arbitrary rule, right? Well, it's like, you have yeah, to they're sponsor. making up rules. So they have the rule, the fab, the fab rule book, because this is the Federation of American bicyclists i think it is so we have fab and we have fab and rad which is great uh the fab the fab rule book and they keep adding um the the bad guy i forgot his name um bart. in the movie and in real life oh what is it bart no the the, the no the corporate bad guy the guy from uh the guy from dirty whatever. dancing no idea yeah. him, him and his little his little mustachioed henchmen they have they have the fab book and they keep adding rules to it to mm-hmm. try and keep crew down first he's got to be sponsored then the company has to have sold so much merchandise, $50,000, I believe. Mm-hmm. And this is where the crowd starts uh, coming together. And we also get another visit from our, our favorite neighbor lady with the cake uh, who comes back in to plead her case <laughs> for crew. I kind of like that because you have the the uh, um, the town hall meeting takes place again, but it's without crew being there, right? Because he basically works at a burger joint or something like that where mm-hmm. – you know, there's a couple confrontations between him and the, you know, the uh, the the cooler kids, right? Where they're. I like, I like how the cooler kid, uh, quote unquote, with the with the cardigans and the nice slick hair and the ties and all that stuff. I like how they're like, I like their part in this movie. I, I like that they're they would normally be like the antagonist, but they're just kind of like upward socialite assholes in this movie for like two scenes and it's pretty good it's pretty funny but they don't play a major role yeah. but they're just like snobs in the movie in the background they're like mahal mm, this bmx ride they're just, they're just they're just preppy ivy league wannabe kids right that don't do anything in this so movie. juvenile <laughs> Yeah. Right. That's it. A little it is like, it does kind of feel like it's a missed opportunity, right? Because I mean, basically in the karate kid, you don't, you, you know, doesn't, uh, doesn't, well, I can't remember. Doesn't Johnny have like some kind of, or he, does he work at the, no, um, no, Johnny's rich. That's right. That's okay. That's where I was going. Right. Yeah. It's like, so you combine it basically is like the yeah. antagonist of the sport that you want to be topping is also 
uh, like a, he's a class higher than you and you're kind of screwed yeah. in both, uh, mm-hmm. you know, and you have to overcome them both here. They split it up, which is like, I don't know if that works for the movie. Cause then you have these extraneous characters. There's characters all over the place. And it's like, do we need all these people? We basically, we got our head honcho corporate dude, which is crease, right? Basically he's the crease of this movie. <laughs> and then yeah. you've got your, um, Johnny, right. Which is Bart. Mm-hmm. Right, I'm yeah, I'm totally drawing a karate kid parallel here, right? This, I mean, this is what I'm, 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 I'm here for you, I'm yeah. with you. Like, I'm going, going with you on, Colin, I'm going with you on this journey. Okay, all right, you. all right, yeah, Take us there. <laughs> so it all comes back to Rocky, right? This is the underdog who wants oh, to try okay, and be, we switched yeah, okay, it. yeah, okay, yeah, right. sorry, yeah, so um, we're moving out, we're mixing, we're mixing metaphors now, yeah, because okay. Allie is Allie Christian, is right? And then, uh, uh, okay, so, um so the town rallies to go, which I guess is that thing with like eighties movies uh, had this thing where there was like this, uh, there's this optimism. This is, I think why we like eighties movies. They have this kind of optimistic spirit and the whole idea that like the town will come together and like, you know, people from, well, we really don't get that. They're from a whole bunch of different conflicting, you know, walks of life. It's like, basically they're just all like, yeah, we really like this, uh, our, we want our guy to succeed. And so they start raising money through printing t-shirts and stuff like that to sponsor, uh, a new racing club to get clue or clue crew into you know, right, it was a Tron reference, which also, yeah. Uh, into the race. Right. <laughs> and so, yes. And Ray I, I'd, I'd like to think, I'd like to think that this is the same town as the break in town. And that the uh, townspeople are just over it. They're like, we got to do another fundraiser. Didn't we just say the, the rec center? Like, now this kid wants to ride a bike? What the fuck is with these kids? That let's, would be great. I, yeah, let's do a movie from those people's point of view, you know? Right. We need, we need to do just short films connecting different 80s movies. That's it. That is a good idea, actually. That's a good idea. That's a copyright twenty uh, twenty one Saturday Night Freak Show. You better not rip yes. us off on this one. <laughs> it's our first copyright of the year. It's our second, I think. Didn't we do another one? I thought so. I, I thought think we, we did, did one, one this year. Yep. Oh, did we? Because nah, we broke else? the uh, the copyright out of uh, mothballs. So it all comes down to this race, right? Um, which is going to be the Next big. Track. That's right, the hell track. This is going to be the big stunt filled uh epic like this is the moment that you have come to this movie to watch how did how did well, <laughs> slow motion would have helped if they uh, used that a little more here it's i think it's it's fine like it's 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 an interesting uh ending are we talking wait do we are we full ending or are we like his qualifying race no, this is the full ending. This is the, yeah, the actual hell race. Track race. Yeah. Hell track. Hell track. I mean, the wipeouts are interesting, but when someone's not wiping out, it's just a bunch of guys bumping into each other on bikes. I like that the announcer went with like, and there goes Michael Parkland again, making his second uh, exit from this race. <laughs> this is the one guy who keeps falling off of shit. He fell off the ramp. He fell over a wall. I like that little joke. That See the going. guy that fell in the water too? I uh, Probably. I feel like it's the same guy. <laughs> We do get a face plant, right? Wasn't that the Ooh, one where the, the guy yeah. face planted? <laughs> like, Ooh, yeah. They that, don't call it a hell track like a for nothing. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to say, there if was, it's hell track, we need some people getting hurt. Oh, I was like, that's he might be paralyzed. Like, for <laughs> real. <laughs> so like the, original, the original starting ramp that they built for this, it doesn't say exactly how high it was, but it was so high that the stunt people were like, I'm not going in on that. So they lowered <laughs> it to 25 feet. Wow. That was the lower version. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Hell track. Nope. If you're going to do it, do it right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, fear of death and all that. Uh, the the starting. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. Not the one that they had to go up in order to like put your you know tire on the ramp. You know, no, you got to like go up the, the starting ha- drop. No, the okay. starting drop. Yeah. Okay. The one that they were like three story drop. That one. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Although I did like the ramp that you had to clear the little gap going up. I've never seen that before. I haven't seen a lot of X games, but that was a new one that I liked. It's like, oh, that seems very difficult. Mm-hmm. And this scene has the the thunder in your heart song that is wonderful. 
And I love that they're this all so good. Let's the songs play in their entirety. You hear all these songs all the way through. <laughs> yeah, because this is the yep. age of MTV. Damn it, we're gonna play songs <laughs> the whole way through, just like Rocky Four. Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. All day. Uh, all day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> would it surprise you, listener, to learn? That although it gets pretty tense in there because there's the whole end is like basically, and there goes uh, number three, number three is going over the hill. Number three is down. Number three is down. Number four is in the, you know, and he's uh, about to take the lead and they're neck and neck and, you know, so-and-so clues taking the lead and, you know, uh, yeah, did we, did we mention that like the, um, the dude from dirty dancing, like pulled the, the twins aside and we're like, your mission is to take him out. So like they were supposed to like, you know, murder him during this 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 race. That was like just pull out a gun and put three in his chest. <laughs> just like we did it, boss. I don't know what you want. The twins are so smart. It's gonna be too wholesome for that though. Oh, why couldn't the twins be idiots? God damn it. <laughs> Holly, would you like to to air your specific grievances with what an announcer said during this race? Oh, oh, oh. So at one point, Crew does like he takes a jump off off a little hill and he does like a backflip. And the announcer is like, "Eat that, Hulk Hogan, or something like that." Uh-huh. And my mind was blown. I have no idea what this reference means. I don't recall Hulk Hogan doing a backflip off of the top rope or anything like that. He wasn't known for backflips off the rope. So what the fuck does this mean? I'm not going to lie to you right now. I kind of missed the last, I kind of missed the end of this movie because I was Googling (laughs) what what? this could possibly mean. (laughs) I'm I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding. I was Googling like Hulk Hogan backflip and I looked up and the credits were rolling. I I really did miss the end of this movie. I'm not going to lie. Really? Well, yeah. I just I assume it's like it's something about a championship, right? It's like he's coming for you. I, I don't get it. I, I don't know. I but don't Colin, know, but I Googled it and noth- the only thing that comes up are qu- uh, the quote from this movie. That's the yeah. only thing that comes up. I don't, think, yeah. I don't think Hulk Hogan has ever done a backflip in his life. If anyone out there knows what they're talking about, please, for the love of God, write in and tell me. Yeah, I have no idea. Thing. He says, there goes Crew Jones with the backflip off the whatever. Hulk Hogan, eat your heart out. Like, it's yes. follows that line immediately. Yes. Yeah. Uh, as far as I know, Hulk Hogan wasn't doing any moonsaults back in the day. So no, sure. I don't think so. I don't know. I mean, there there could be someone out there that it's like, Holly, you're a fucking idiot. Like, it knows exactly what they're talking <laughs> about. Please tell me. If I'm Dom. wrong. If, if, I, if I'm, yeah, Dom, anyone, if I'm wrong and Hulk Hogan did like a famous backflip at SummerSlam or something, tell me. I need to know. <laughs> yeah, and please send us video. I would love to see mm-hmm. this. Yeah. I, this does not exist. I'm going to say it now. It does not exist. Okay, I feel yeah. like his body has always been way too frail to do that. Like, he's always been like, you know, glass bones, that dude. What? He was the Hulk- 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 Hulkamania. Yeah. yeah. No, I, think he, I think he could take it. I Did just you ever watch Hogan knows best where he went through all the problems he has? It's, with it's not in his prime, though. Like, not, well, I mean, yeah. no, not in his prime, but I mean, I, I, he's just so beefy. I don't think he was agile enough to do a flip of any kind. Mm. Yeah, that's a lot of force to get that amount of weight going right? in there like that. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh. like I said, it probably doesn't surprise you, listener, to find out that Crew Jones actually does best the uh, world champion and becomes the BMX bike champion of the world in what? this race wins the hundred twenty thousand dollars hundred thousand dollars wins the corvette do we say there was a corvette on the line there's a corvette Ooh. on the line and he wins it oh Wait, shit did they mentioned it's that? the 80s there has to be a corvette there should always be I mean, a we corvette. see the corvette yeah it's red um, naturally but then there's a twist at the end, right? Well, it's not really a twist. It's just like basically tw- that corporate America is fucking bent and evil. And the guy is like, Bart, you're out of here. You can't even follow direction. Or what do you say? You can't win. You're a loser. And basically you're off the team. Kicks him right off yeah. of the. That's right. That's all it takes. You lose. You're out. But thank God. Yeah. The spirit of Team Rad, right? Is this unifying force that brings everybody together because when the two rivals have their handshake right there, right? It's like, good race, man. Good race. It's like, maybe there's a, a room on the team for one more person. 
Nah, see, I don't like this ending because now we don't get the Cobra Kai 30 years later version of these two, which, come on, let's do it. Give me the rad TV series. Let's go. Just call it Mongoose. <laughs> we gotta go with the opposite name. <laughs> we gotta go with the opposite name. So just call it Mongoose. Stick it on Netflix for three seasons and watch the money roll in. I don't see the problem there. <laughs> well, um, you, you, have, you have one snag in that plan. Lori Laughlin's kind of occupied right now. Yeah, yeah, she's in the they clinch, just, so. They can reference her for two seasons until she gets out. They did it with a little <laughs> shoe. We could do this. <laughs> It can be done. Never say never. That's I've right. seen crazier things in this world. Are you listening, Netflix? This is money in the bank right here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And we own it now. Uh, apparent, I say, I claim it. Like, we own this idea. So yeah. uh, talk to us, Netflix. Copyright. I dig it. 2021 Saturday Night. Mongoose. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. Well, I mean, that brings us to the end of the movie. You guys got anything else before we go into mailbag? All right. Uh, so I tell you what, uh, listener, what we're going to do is we're going to read some of your mail. Then we're going to tell you what we thought of red and whether you should watch it. But first of all, we got to summon our mailman and his name is Igor. Bring us the mail. Masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. Why? Thank you, Igor. Igor's oh, got a little handmade brand red racing shirt on today. Mm-hmm. And he's got his little bike. Oh, he's got, he brought the mail and like the oh, paper delivery training, sack. Thank you. It's training wheels though. <laughs> Aww. And he just did, did he toss it. the mail like the yeah. newspaper? Uh-huh. Yeah. On no, the porch, Igor. Slimy. On the porch. He just threw it in Colin's face. <laughs> um, so we want to let you act, know how. Colin, act. So, <laughs> we want to know, let you know how you can write in and participate in this interactive portion of the show. All you got to do is follow along on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Saturday Freak Show. Or Twitter. At Sat Freak Show. Or you can email us. Saturday Night Freak Show at Yahoo.com. Or follow along on Instagram at Saturday Night Freak Show about tonight's movie, Rad. Matthew Ola writes in and says, well, thrashing is the next logical step. Okay. Yeah. I, I wondered what the next step was. I know. We're still waiting for Sean to watch Death Spa because he said he was going to watch Death Spa after last uh. week's killer workout. Right, I did. Then I forgot. Ten minutes later, I'm so sorry. (laughs) Uh, Nelson, (laughs) sorry. Nelson Nascimento says, "I've always preferred BMX bandits, but this one will fix your craving for bicycle stunts." I don't know that I've ever had a craving for bicycle stunts, but good to know. (laughs) Novato Judoka says, "I didn't grow up with this, but I watched it last year after putting it off for years, and I love it for the '80s feel or the dance moves." in space suits i find it impossible not to yell break the ice while air guitaring and doing ass sliding right. you do ass sliding yeah. in your spare time like do you have your own ass slide in your yard or sure why not i'm, I'm gonna tell just, us any, more any sort of sliding is ass sliding to me now you know well, Jacob Kotner says, where do I begin? Red is my happy place. I discovered this movie in 1987 on VHS and immediately got a BMX bike, which became my main mode of transportation for the next several years. This movie has amazing music that pumps me up every time I hear it. The bike tricks in the movie are second to none. I've never seen some of the tricks done anywhere, but in this film, this is my second favorite movie of all time. Second only to jaws i can't wait to hear the episode and i hope you love the movie keep on freaking you freaks that's an interesting list yeah (laughs) i mean i I just got two movies i jaws and fucking rat (laughs) i can't judge because if you look at my top four films on letterbox it's like an insane person you know your four (laughs) favorite movies of all time letterbox only lets you pick four so like it it's insane all right. Well, we want to remind you, you can listen to Jacob on Refund Theater. Andrew Volstorf writes in and says, you better be watching the Vinegar Syndrome 4K UHD. Well, I tell I'm you, sure Andrew, Sean already has it in his cart. 
Yeah. Uh, I mean, we're, we're close. Uh, there's a lot of stuff. There's a lot of commentaries. I have some questions. Well, it makes you wonder, to. Andrew, Andrew, are you, are you like a representative? I mean, Hey, you can get a hold of us. And, uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> David Dawson <laughs> not trying to get free stuff. <laughs> David Dawson <laughs> says, you guys want to borrow my VHS copy of this? So right there, uh, in two I will borrow comments, it. We just David. went from <laughs> Blu-ray, UHD, 4K to VHS. <laughs> yeah, David, if you let me borrow it, I'm going to burn it. Just so you, just so you know, <laughs> that has nothing to do with the movie. That's David. David's yeah, the one responsible. Say, if, if, you, if you let Sean borrow something, you're not getting it back. So <laughs> that is not true. Um, but Colin, David's what the one you're missing. <laughs> none, none. Only because of quarantine, probably though. Um, David's the one who keeps giving me suggestions of the really bad movies. So yeah, you, guys all, wanna, you guys all want to burn his. Hey, Sean, don't yeah. blame him. David? Is this Bloodbeat David? Mm -hmm. Yes, Bloodbeat David is you what go we to hell, David. Know. <laughs> <laughs> this is what I'm going to call him from now on. Hey, Bloodbeat David. Blood but, beat Sean, you're in control of your own actions. Don't try to push the responsibility off on someone else. You're an adult. Not, you make your own choices. Not all the time. Well, about last week's a movie, we watched a movie called Killer Workout. Jimbo Ice writes in and says, ah, David Pryor, a real crowd pleaser. I don't remember much of the horror scenes in this one, but man, the guy can direct a lurid aerobic session. <laughs> yeah, if you just stick a camera on someone's ass, you can direct a, a lurid aerobic session, too. And crotches. I was just amazed at how many times he would put the camera right in front of women doing yeah, like. Yeah, we know, Colin. Yeah, it, we know. Well, I mean, like, who would it's do art. that? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so previously, we watched The Adventures of Buckaroo Banzai and Waskily Weird Rabbit wrote in and said, I'm kind of surprised that no one picked up that this is kind of spoofing those old pulp comics like Doc Savage and exploitation movies. But if you never grew up with it, I can see how the movie comes off random as fuck because it is. Yeah, I never saw any of those growing up. So this is, again, I think we all discovered it wasn't really in our wheelhouse. Yeah. Yeah, I'm unfamiliar with Doc Savage, to be honest with you. I mean, I know that he was the man of bronze, right? Man of steel, Superman. I think is actually a play on man of bronze, right? Mm. And George Pal, who did uh, War of the Worlds and a bunch of special effects movies in the 50s, I think his last movie was Doc Savage, Man of Bronze. And I still haven't seen it, and I never hear anybody talking about it, but I'm curious. <laughs> right. Um Pat Hetfield writes in and said, we mentioned a movie. Uh, we were talking about eighties fantasy movies on that episode. We mentioned dreamscape with uh, Dennis Quaid and Pat Hetfield said, dreamscape is a great movie with a great cast, unique, bizarre, and interesting. Uh, Hanford Lang wrote in about Buckaroo Banzai. said, what's the deal with the watermelon? <laughs> yeah. yeah, I did not. I didn't. I missed that. I did not notice that. in that movie. It's, it's really fast, but Clearly, yeah. no one at the studio asked that question. So that's right. We covered that on our show, which you'll have to go back and listen to. Grant Parrish says Bucky Bonds can't be held responsible for the manufacturing and design standards of the IVG, which I can't even remember what that stood for. The international something. So anyway, he works in the adventures department, not R and D. There you go. <laughs> uh. We were, I posted a picture, I think, on Facebook of that crazy, whatever, the cheap ass goggles that Buckaroo Bonza. Yeah. The bubble wrap. Yeah, the bubble wrap yeah. goggles. Thank you. Yeah. 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 So not his division. All right. Got it. <laughs> uh, Michael Whitaker says uh, after rewatching it, it's a very weird and unfinished idea of a movie. I think I've always liked it for what it could potentially be, which is why I'm secretly pulling for a TV series. There's a lot to expand on, and it would be neat to see someone try. I think I mean, there's a lot there's there's a lot they, there they that did. they could have done. So who knows? You know, well, he's talking specifically about the one that Kevin Smith was supposed to do. But I think at, since last week's episode or two weeks ago, I think there is like a Buckaroo Banzai comic or story coming out from the original author. I don't know. There's something in the works or coming out. Um, Mike Welch says, uh, I've turned this movie off every time I watched it. I mean, I can see yeah. that. Well, yep. Yeah. Yeah. Peter Gatt said, rewatching Buckaroo Banzai, and gee, I don't think my opinion will ever change on this one. I just feel lost. Yeah, same. Uh, us too. Us yeah, too. We were, we were there with you. Graham, 4304, says, it's an amazing film. A true classic. Man, we really got just, either you love it or you hate it, I think. Yeah. 
Stuart, there are a lot of people know? hate us after that episode. Yeah, I mean, this is a divisive <laughs> movie, I think. Uh, Stuart, and we apologize for the sound quality on that one. I know I don't think we've addressed it, but yeah, that went uh, all wrong. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Uh, Stuart yeah. D says, I was, I was about 12 the first time I saw it on HBO, and I loved it. But after rewatching it, I can't help but get the feeling that cocaine had a hand in inspiring this crazy film. Lots and lots of cocaine. You, you know might what? be right, my friend. Couple hands. This is one of those movies where I don't think there was an ounce of cocaine on that set. I think this was just all just really happy, peppy people who were just like, yeah, we're going to make a fucking BMX movie. Buckaroo Bonsai. <laughs> okay, talk about Buckaroo Bonsai, dude. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I thought we had gone back to... No, no, we're still... Uh, yeah, we're, we're plowing ahead. Jesus, all right. We're <laughs> done talking about Buckaroo Bonsai, please. <laughs> no, no, there's still more because Buckaroo Bonsai uh, turns out... Uh, we got a mailbag. So JD Calabrese says, uh, to answer your question about whether or not the fans of this movie have grown up with it. I didn't see it until my twenties and it's been a favorite of mine ever since. There you go. It just, it reaches some people and it doesn't reach others. Uh, so. Diz World <laughs> says, I first heard of this movie by watching The Life Aquatic with Steve Zizou. And yeah. since the ending scene is an homage to the ending of Buckaroo Banzai, I think this movie is in the same realm as the 80s Flash Gordon with Buckaroo being a kind of Doc Savage movie throwback to the serials in the 1930s. Boom. There you go. See, we, we totally there missed. I mean, this when we you know, it. maybe, but I like Life Aquatic and I like Flash Gordon, but I didn't like Buckaroo Banzai. Yeah. <laughs> And finally, Jimbo That's Ice it. says, uh, well, if you didn't like this one, I'm beginning to think you wouldn't have liked Robo Vampire, which he must have really? recommended, I think, in, uh, for our listener's choice month. Robo Vampire. But, it's, but it sounds so much better. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot more interesting. It does, yeah. yeah. Well, I tell you what, thank you very much, all of you, sincerely, for writing in. We appreciate it. Uh, let us know, you know, obviously what you think about uh, tonight's movie, which is rad. Now we're going to go around the table and tell you what we thought of it, starting with Holly. Holly, what did you think about Rad? Is it indeed radical, as Colin says? You know, I don't know that it was radical, but it was bitching. I definitely thought it was bitching. Um, I was... Uh, I wasn't sure if this was going to be a lot of fun or if it was going to be kind of boring. I mean, we, we kind of ride the fence on, on those two things um, with these types of movies, either it's just kind of fluff and dull or it's just a lot of fun. And this one was a lot of fun. Um, we don't normally do well with like PG rated movies like this, but this one was a good time. Um, I, I was never bored with it. Like the whole time I, I was just entertained wholeheartedly. It's ridiculous. It's stupid. The acting is atrocious. The story is just the predictable feel good, like family movie, but God damn it. Was it fun? Um, yeah, I, I enjoyed this so much, so much more than I actually thought I was going to, to be honest. Um, yeah, I, I, like I said, it's it's dumb. It's really dumb, but God damn it, was it fun? So I'm gonna recommend it. I thought Rad was a good time, and uh, yeah, I I I don't. I'm not familiar with uh, the BMX genre as a whole, so this is kind of my first experience with BMX movies. I think, uh, but yeah, it was a good time. So I'm gonna recommend it. Yeah, Sean, what do you think of Rad? Rad. Um, this is a very <clears throat> it's, this feels like a very pure movie to me. Um, there, and I think if you look back on it, it it, uh, it really is. The bad guys aren't that bad. The cops are good. Like they're having fun time with our, our protagonist. Um, the townspeople are all really behind the, like this event that comes into town. Like they bring the event in, and they're like, "What about the people who already live here? They'd like to participate too." Like no one, there's no old people telling like it. I mean, the one. Uh, the one old dude at the beginning is just like, well, this place would be better without kids. Well, even he does a complete turnaround by the end and is given money towards them. Um, it, it just, it's, it's, this movie is so pure of heart. It's hard not to just kind of like, all right, I like it because it's, you know, they're just, it seems like everyone's having fun and it's a good time. And I was, I was actually entertained by this. Um, again, for uh, reasons that you like 80s movies about BMX dancing. 
Um, <laughs> it, it, I mean, it really is like, uh, um, uh, but, uh, like we said, you know, dialogue's not great. Uh, acting's not, you know, not so good. Um, but I mean, like, it's, it's fun. There's just enough. What the hell are these people doing? The damn Canadians. Uh, there's just enough. What the hell are these people doing to be like, this is very, I mean, I've never seen this, but ass sliding and then BMX stunts into a river and then health tracks. And, uh, I mean, weird paper routes, uh, uh, standoffs with nice standoffs with cops. Like it's a weird movie, but I think it's because it's so very pure of heart and that's a weird thing. And it's kind of the movie, you know, I think we all needed this right now because it's been dark times lately and it was nice. Uh, I'm, I'm uh, bravo Michaela for bringing us a nice palate cleanser, a nice joyful yeah. way to start, uh, to restart the new year. It's going to get and, worse. I tell you and that. A movie that's, and a movie but, that's primarily outdoors. It's a sunny right, movie, <laughs> right? It's a nice uh, yeah, sunny movie. There's physical activity going on. Uh, I mean, it's, 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 uh, it was fun to watch. Um, yeah, I just, it's kind of lighthearted and I kind of had a good time with it. So, um, I think you should watch it. It's, you won't, Having not seen any other BMX movie of the genre, you won't see anything like it. And that's all I'll say. <laughs> um, so yeah, I recommend Rad. Uh, it was uh, it truly was radical. Um, I give it three out of five radicals. Uh, so that's a thumbs up, <laughs> Colin. What did you think about Rad? I'm afraid that I'm going to be like the downer on this whole thing. Uh, uh-huh. Yeah, I know. After I all knew this, it. I yeah. fucking knew it, Colin. Yeah. God damn it. Because I sat there. I mean, but, Colin, you, know, you can let yourself enjoy something. It's okay. I did, but see, <laughs> Stay I did. Safe I, place. I did actually Colin, enjoy. Colin's the, got it, a room of his failed BMX <laughs> career. Where he just goes in there and looks at the wall. He's got his old uniform. That's it's my that's my order. bowling career, uh, Sean. <laughs> where I have the even better, <laughs> even better. <laughs> With the one lone trophy, and it was all downhill from there. He, Colin, uh, got a Colin bowled a two ninety eight <laughs> once, and he's never he's never gone back. He's just like ah, I can't do it. Uh, uh the good old days. No, um, I think my. Uh, you know, if wholesomeness would, w- you could package it, you know, I mean, aside from all the, the shits, you know, right. You Puritan moms out there. Uh, this is like one of the most wholesome movie er- movies ever made uh, because, you know, basically, yeah, there's a, there is, there is conflict, but the conflict isn't really like, you know, life or death, you know, kind of situations. It's just, you know, this is a movie that's designed to, to be fun. And I think you, when you it, watch it, it is fun, you know, but I think the movie to me really did peak with that, like uh crazy, uh, like BMX prom. Right. And after that, it was kind of like, okay, where's my interest here? Um, and then it kind of just settled into like, oh, wow, the acting's really bad in this. And like, I'm still waiting for these like awesome BMX stunts and like how much, how interesting is BMX stunt work? Cause it's basically just kids riding bikes and granted. Yes, I could probably not do this. You're right. I probably can't do it. The stuff that they just do. kids riding bikes. But oh it's just man. Kids the BMX riding community bikes. is going to be after you. Holy shit. I know. Yeah. yeah. Coming for you. And uh, so gradually, yeah, I kind of lost interest in the movie. And then it was just kind of like, oh, okay. So, yeah, I don't know that. Um, I don't know that I can recommend it, even though, like, it had a bitchin' soundtrack, you know. That kinda- it did have a bitchin' soundtrack. And even even the scene when they're at the H-E double hockey sticks track. Yeah. Colin, <laughs> come on. Yeah. <laughs> um, it just kind of felt like, wow, this is a movie. There's, there's like nothing here, but I get that it appeals to people who are in BMX, you know, the, the, that circle or sport. Yeah. Because this is your movie, right? This is like the BMX movie. I'm sorry. I haven't seen the other two, so I can't speak authoritatively. <laughs> uh, I think they, they probably made a few between now and that. Yeah. But they're like, I love red. Cause red's awesome. And you know, whatever. Uh, I just I haven't been uh, able I'm, to watch it in 30 years, but I love yeah, it. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think I am going to say like, uh, no, I don't think you actually have to go see rad. If you don't have like, uh, an interest in that, you know, it's just a gut feeling. I don't know. Yeah. I, I enjoyed <laughs> no, it for a while. We, I did we're, actually we're shaking, like it. <laughs> I know everybody's looking at, at me. You. We, we understand, we understand, but we're shaking our heads at you, but yeah. we understand. It's like, we should just, you're an individual person and you have yeah. your own thoughts. Yeah. I was like, I was like, no, no to rad. I just, uh, yeah. 
I don't know. Not a happy person, maybe. I don't know. I, who knows? <laughs> oh, shit. All right. But I did you like the soundtrack. I may actually go find the soundtrack. No, to me, the last Starfighter is the version of this that I want to see the town rallying around the guy who has the ability to fucking play the best video game ever. Uh, you know what? In the space it's a different aliens. type of movie. Yeah. This is an underdog That's story. Colin, Colin didn't grow up with movies like Brink either, so. Yeah. Right. So yeah, I'm or gonna motocross. Is that a movie? Yeah, the, the Disney f- Channel original get, movie that came out in the nineties. All right, see, yeah, there you go. My education is uh, <laughs> sorely lacking, so I'm gonna pass on Rad. That's right. I'm gonna be the sole descendant. Michaela, take us home. <laughs> I really wish I would have seen this movie as a kid because I would have been obsessed with it. It would have been the ultimate comfort blanket movie. Even as an adult now, it would have been a comfort blanket movie. I'm sad I missed the boat on it as a kid. So if you have kids, do your kids a favor and show them this movie. Like, what's the like? It's like the most wholesome movie ever. They can't get anything bad out of this movie. Maybe they might fuck around a little bit on bikes more than they should. But like, other than that, yeah. you know, show this to your kids. Um, yeah, this is the second time I've seen it. Uh, the first time it was a terrible VHS transfer with tons of tracking and like some scenes were way too dark and some were way too light. It was awful. So it was nice to watch it in HD on Amazon. Can't believe I haven't bought the Blu-ray yet. I surely do that. <laughs> Cause, Cause Sean, I too am curious about the commentary for this. Cause there's gotta be stories, you know, there's, there um, are three commentaries on that Blu-ray. So you're going to get something out of it. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's a lot. Um, I mean, you know, it's, it is, I I think it's one of like those classic kind of freak show catch all films because that you have like this star that would later be really famous that's in this ridiculous role. You know, you have really not well done stunts, obvious stuntmen, ridiculous concepts like ass sliding that are talked about like it's a totally normal thing that everybody does. <laughs> like, these are all things we love to look for in a freak show movie. And yes. like, yeah, I think Holly, you're right when you say that. PG movies usually do not do well here. It's true. Um, I I thought about that when I like started up on Amazon. I saw it was PG. I was like, oh fuck. I hope that like it still plays as good as I remember. It, it was. It was I like big, that PG. Fuck. Yeah, it was. It was a big risk, but it played off. Yeah. I mean, uh, you know, I feel like a lot of people have seen the YouTube clip of like the BMX bike dancing. Um, and I think like the first time I saw it, I assumed there was more context to that. No, it's not. <laughs> what you see is exactly what you get. There is no context to that. Um, I think it's totally worth a watch. It is like a spectacle. You know, you just got to let it wash over you and get on board with. Yes, I've seen this story done a million times, but have I seen it done cheaply by rural Canadians? You know, maybe not. So, so definitely <laughs> gotta check out Rad. Highly recommend. I think our audience will love it. I'm sure you're probably right. I, I feel bad. Oh, there was you were saying about like show it to your kids. You can have the race, Colin. Yeah, I know. I gotta bring it with you. Yeah. Um, there was a disclaimer at the end of the credits that basically said, courtesy of the producers, like the stunts done in Rad are extreme, potentially dangerous, and you shouldn't do these at home. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> what did you guys watch the what is what is with the Reddit out names in the credits? Did you guys see that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was- there was an IMDb trivia thing about it. I didn't write it down, but Colin, do you know? No, no, I didn't look that up. They were like, uh, it looked like they were redacted. Yeah, I can yeah. pull it up real quick. There was an IMDb trivia thing about it I saw. You look that up, and I'm going to mention that, Holly, I'd like you to be the woman who uh, does not curse for the rest of being on this show. You spell everything out, or do your H-E double hockey sticks thing. <laughs> I like that. I'd like that to be a characteristic you play up for the rest of this show. Okay, I'm on it. Okay, thank you. Oh, shoot. <laughs> What the frick? H E double what? hockey sticks. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and put a put a, a Minnesota accent into it, please. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah, I want I want Bobby's mom. That's that's what I want. Oh yeah, don't you know? Oh yeah, don't you know? Mm-hmm. All right. <laughs> it it says that the uh Writers Guild of America wouldn't let the crew put them in originally. Trainee script writer was w- written, but it was pulled last minute. Worrying huh. maybe five. Interesting. Wow. I think they were trying to credit oh. people that weren't registered in the WGA as writers is what it sounds like. Hmm. Yeah. That's, That's a no-no. Okay. Interesting. Never seen that before. All right. Well, uh, that's, uh, that wraps up rad next week. We're going to watch a movie that's chosen by 
Colin, thank you for getting closer to the camera so I know who to talk to. Uh, Colin, what are we watching next week? All right, I think we're going to rip a Band-Aid off this one. This is another 80s classic that has had a long time. We've wanted this to come to the show. We've wanted to see uh, for the longest time. Never too young to die. Ah, right. That's right. Okay. This is a great follow-up to this movie, Colin. I think so. John Stamos. John Stamos. And Vanity <gasps> and Gene Simmons. And you're going to lose your shit. Never too young to die. <laughs> Next week awesome. on the Saturday Night Freak Show. So until then, in, like in the meantime, Sean, start thinking of a Bob Saget movie. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, <laughs> or Dave Coulier. <laughs> that we're doing. Yeah, All we're right. filling uh, out the full house. Ooh. That's not I'm true. The full house. <laughs> then we're watching. Then we're watching Dumb and Dumber. Uh, oh no! Oh, no. <laughs> I'll be sick next that week. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right. Well, join us next week for Never Too Young to Die on the Saturday Night Freak Show. And until then, the basement is going dark. <laughs>